Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is yet another video covering the W25Q NOR flash memory in the QSBI mode. In the previous video we saw how to connect the flash memory to the MCU, and how to initialize, write, read, and enable the memory mapped mode. As mentioned in the previous video, today we will see how to create an external loader for a specific flash memory and controller combo, and how to use the external loader to program, and debug the external flash memory. Here I have created a new project with a new name, but it is basically a replica of the previous project. Everything is the same as where we left in the previous tutorial. I have given a new name to it, so that it must be clear that this is the project for external loader. Let's debug it once to see if everything is working fine. I am setting a breakpoint at the while loop, like I set the last time. Alright we have hit the breakpoint, and the read buffer contains the data from the memory. This means everything is fine and we can proceed with this project. We will use the guide provided by the SD to create a new external loader. You can see a SD's repository is dedicated to it. You should download this entire directory, as we need to copy certain files from it. The files in this directory work well with the QSBA code structure provided by the street. This is why our functions in the quad SBI source and header files are the same as per the SD's code. Before you proceed to make an external loader, you should also check their main branch of the repo. It contains some loader projects for the combination of the flash memory and the microcontroller. So if you have any of these combinations, you can directly use them instead of creating a new loader. Unfortunately they don't have the combination of the W25Q32 with the L496 nucleo board, so I am creating one here. I have already downloaded the directory, so let's open it, go to the QSBI testing folder, and open the main test source file. Before proceeding with the loader, we will perform a final test for the memory, so let's copy the contents from this main file, and paste it in our project. Here by default 100 sectors are declared for testing. Each sector is 4 kilobytes in size, so this will test the first 400 kilobytes of the memory. Alright let's debug the project now. Set the breakpoints at each of these while loops to see if something has gone wrong. Let's run the debugger now. We have hit the final breakpoint, that means everything was fine during the test. The QSBI memory passed the test successfully, and we can proceed with the loader. This code actually first writes the data to the different sectors, and then compares the sector's data with the memory to verify if the data is correct. The code works fine means the QSBI is responding well. Now go to the directory we downloaded, and open the loader files folder. If you have a H7 based device, you need to copy these files, otherwise open the other folder. We need to copy these files in our project. Copy the source files into the source directory, header file into the include directory, and the linker file in the main project folder. The loader source file contains the code for initialization of the loader, along with other functions like write, erase, and verify the data. It uses the same QSBI functions that we used in our previous project. The device info file contains the information about the loader. Here you can give a name to the loader, which makes it easier to identify the memory type and MCU. It fetches the memory flash size, the sector size, and the page size information from the quad SBI header file, which we declared in the previous tutorial. Also set the QSBI start address as P or MCU, as I explained in the previous tutorial. Let's open the linker file. This is not being used right now, as the project is still using the default flash linker file. 
Before we make this a default file, make sure the RAM size is correct for your controller. For my case, this is 320 kilobytes. Although the origin has some offset here, so the actual size will be a little less than 320 kilobytes, but that's fine. Now we have to make this linker file as the default linker, so open the project properties, go to CC++ build, settings. Under the linker, click on general. Here we have the path to the current linker file, so we will change it to linker.ld. Uncheck the discard unused section, click apply to save the configuration. Now build the project to generate the loader file. Here you can see the new linker file is being used for the project now. Under the debug folder, you can see the project.elf file. This is the file we can use as the loader. To do so, we will open the project folder, and rename this file to the .stldr. We have the loader file ready to be used now. Although there is one more way to generate the file automatically. We can use the post build script to automatically copy and rename the file. Go to CC++ build settings again. Under the build steps tab, paste the command in the post build command. Now rebuild the project. Now we have the loader file generated in the main project folder itself. So we were able to successfully generate the external loader file. Now we will copy this file with the other loader files inside the cube programmer directory. In my case it is located in program files, sd folder, stm32 cube, cube programmer, bin, external loader. Now let's see how to use the loader file in cube programmer. Open the cube programmer. Click on the external loader to see the available loaders. Here you can see our loader in the list. This is the same name that we set in the device info source file. The board is L496, start address is 90 million hex, memory size is 4 megabytes, and the page size is 256 bytes. Select the loader, and connect the board. Now go to the memory tab, and read the address 90 million hex. Here you see we got the data stored in the QSBR memory. This data was stored during our previous test, and we did not erase the memory after that. We can load the data into the memory, and to test it, there is a 1 megabyte bin file provided in the directory. Let's go to the download tab. Browse the file, set the address 90 million hex. Make sure the verify programming is checked so that it can read the entire memory and verify if the write was successful. You can see the write and the read, both were successful. If we check the data in the memory, we can see the updated data. So we were able to successfully program the data into the QSBI memory with the help of the cube programmer. Now let's see how to use the external loader in a practical application in the cube IDE. I am going to use the previous project for this purpose. Here we have a write buffer, which is defined somewhere in the RAM. Suppose this buffer contains the image data, or the video data, then we can't afford it in the RAM, and hence an external flash memory is a better storing option for it. To push it to the external flash memory, let's give it a section attribute and point it to the ext flash location. Now we need to define the section in the linker script. So open the flash linker file, and let's define the QSBI flash memory first. This will be a read-only memory, 
The origin address is 90 million hex, with the size of 4 megabytes. Now inside the section, we will add a new section for the external flash. Here define the section we used for the right buffer, and point the external flash section to the QSBI flash memory. This is it, let's build the project now. You can see that the QSBI flash has been added to our memory regions, and 22 bytes are occupied in it. You can also check it in the memory details tab. Here you can see the right buffer is located at the address 90 million hex, and it occupies 22 bytes in the memory. We are not going to erase the memory, or write any data to the memory now. Just initialize the QSBI, and enable the memory mapped mode. To test it better, let's copy the data from the write buffer into the read buffer. We also need to enable the external loader, but let me first debug without it. This will clarify your doubt about why we need the external loader in the first place. Let's set a breakpoint at the mem copy function. You can see the write buffer is located at the address 90 million hex. Let's also enable the memory viewer for the QSBI region. Alright we have hit the breakpoint. The memory mapped mode was successful, so we can see the memory data in the debugger. You can see the memory still contains the old data. Although the write buffer has been allocated to this location, but the data inside the write buffer is still not present here. Instead the write buffer now points to the data, which was already present in the flash memory. This is not something we want, we want the write buffer data to move to the external flash memory. But we couldn't achieve it because we did not use the external loader. So let's go to the debug configuration, the debugger tab, and add the external loader. The loader should not be present in the list here, so we have to manually allocate it. I am allocating it from another project folder. Click apply to save the configuration, and debug the project now. Let's run the debugger now. We have hit the breakpoint, and you can see the external memory has been updated with the new data. This is the same data which was stored in the right buffer. Also note that we are not using any write function here, the data is stored here because we pointed the write buffer to this address. The way it works is it erases one sector at a time, and copies the required data into the memory, without us manually performing the write operation. This is exactly what the loader is needed for. If we copy the data from the write buffer, we get the exact data that we stored in it. Imagine if you have the large image data, you can point it to the external flash memory, and then later send it to the display when needed. This is what we will be using the external flash memory for. If you want to execute the application from the external flash, check out another video about the QSBI XIP in the QSBI playlist. In the upcoming videos, I will cover how to use the external flash to store the image data for the LVGL and touch GFX. This is it for this video. I hope you understood how to deal with the external flash memories using QSBI, and how to create an external loader. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.